Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootleggers, shills, death slays, hearse, peasants, vessels, minions, meat sacks. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, I want to clear something up. Uh, I guess a lot of people were kind of excited thinking that a useful idiot was going off the air because uh, I, I left my uh, old home after living there for 15 years and I'm now living uh, down here in, uh, well, somewhere in the middle of Washington State. I cannot reveal. And, uh, and I'm having a new uh, cottage built. And that will be the future site of a, a useful idiot headquarters and quite a headquarters it will be. But in the meantime, I'm here. So, uh, no, I'm not going anywhere. And, uh, boy, what a popular video that was, too. I guess a lot of people think I was uh, uh, leaving the YouTube airways. But, <laughs> alas, I am not. I am here. So uh, let's dive back into uh, it. And a lot of the stories I'm going to be bringing up, like so many other times, uh, I've kind of ducked out for a month or so. Um, I do a little bit of catch up, so some of these stories won't be that topical, but at least uh, uh, I will have covered them because I think they're important. And uh, one of them, of course, is a story that uh, doesn't really matter when you talk about it. It's a, a grand tragedy on an epic scale, uh, on a global scale, and that, of course, is Fukushima. And uh, the latest really scary story, and of course, I always wait until things are really fucked up and things are really shitty and some really bad information comes out and this of course is one of those cases with Fukushima where it turns out they don't know where the molten cores are and uh, so they're talking about three molten cores where they don't even know where they are anymore and uh, but since the, that story first broke a couple months ago uh, now they think they might have located one and, uh, and according to Japanese news that's changed the whole narrative of how successful uh, the, the decommissioning of uh, Daiichi Fukushima a nuclear plant will be and uh, so <laughs> so anyway what a, what a bright glimmer of hope the fact that they might have located one of the molten cores but the, 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 what worries me the most is uh, because of TEPCO's constant lying uh, the, these molten cores is, essentially have been uh, gone for quite some time uh, years now and um, and yet they've never admitted it but more importantly uh, when they originally discussed the idea of these sort of core meltdowns they said it was a worst case scenario and that the effects on the environment would be catastrophic within a couple of weeks. And uh, now, that, now we've had that scenario with these molten cores uh, being lost for several years now. So I have to assume the very, very worst and that uh, these uh, molten cores have, have penetrated the concrete uh, vessels and are, are, are burrowing into the earth as we speak. And one of the other parts of this story that's a little disturbing is the fact that a, the prime minister mentioned uh, slipped uh, in a uh, uh, discussion of uh, uh, Fukushima and slipped and mentioned a, a total of six meltdowns. So are there uh, three other units uh, that have melted down uh, that uh, they aren't discussing? And certainly that is within the realm of possibility. Uh, uh, a little Freudian slip there. But uh, anyway, so as of May 2016, uh, 200 tons of debris lies within each unit and a total of 200 a total of 600 tons of melted fuel uh, debris and a mixture of concrete and metals lay in, in all, uh, all these units. And uh, so the, 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 the impracticality of, of getting into these uh, units and finding these molten cores and getting them out is uh, virtually impossible. In fact, not even virtually impossible. It's impossible. And they've admitted as much that uh, the technology doesn't even exist. Uh, so what they do instead is uh, outlaw the use of the term uh, meltdown and that, that will... Uh, deflect from the problem but uh, they, they've come out with some figures 600 tons of reactor fuel melted in the exact location of the highly radioactive blobs uh, remains a mystery so 600 tons of reactor fuel and, uh, and, and, and as I've uh, brought up at every video since then let's remember that since then there's all kinds of uh, radiation uh, coming out of the Fukushima plant uh, including the environment including the uh, Pacific Ocean on, on a huge scale 300 tons of water being poured over these uh, disappeared uh, molten cores and all this radioactivity and 600 tons of reactor fuel every day going into the ocean and uh, so they, they assume that this fuel has burnt through the reactor pressure vessels and they assume it is, it is uh, digging deeper and that's why they of course why they can't locate it uh, absolutely uncontrollable fission of the nuclear fuel continues five years later and so uh, at some point when uh, some, um, some some more levels of truth come out of the story, uh, certainly we're finding out that this is uh, dwarfing uh, the problems we had with uh, Chernobyl, and yet here we are still in the open air with this uh, 
this dilapidated uh, nuclear plant that's uh, burrowing, uh, well, having radioactive material pour out into the environment around the globe and into the earth as we speak. And uh, one official came out and said, quote, nobody really knows where the fuel is, unquote. So uh, pretty candid there. And uh, so, and, and then we have stories too about uh, uh, the ground underneath because of all the, the, the water soaking the earth is just turning to quicksand. And of course, with the addition of uh, these molten cores uh, and the uh, liquefaction of the land around there, uh, we're going to continue to have even more problems. And we've already seen some problems uh, after this last typhoon, the ice wall. Um, you know, I wasn't even sure if they even put in the ice wall, but ice wall is already melting in a couple places after the last typhoon, so that's not going to be a very good fix either. And uh, also we have uh, 10,000 tons of radioactive uh, uh, water pooling in underground trenches uh, in the one to four reactor buildings and uh, 40 locations all around those uh, reactor buildings. So on top of everything else and all these leaks and all the leaks and all the uh, garbage bags full of uh, earth and all the leaks and all the tanks of contaminated water and all the 300 tons of water that's cooling, supposedly cooling, and then going into the ocean every day. On top of all that, we have the uh, 10,000 tons of uh, water pooling in, in these underground um, uh, trenches. So uh, needless to say, uh, I, I never have any good news about Fukushima. In fact, uh, the more and more uh, things that come out, the more and more uh, diabolical it looks and the more and more it's going to be something that uh, you know, hum mankind is going to deal with for uh, decades and uh, centuries and perhaps millennia and um, well <laughs> what a way to start off uh, my new batch of videos by something so depressing as Fukushima but uh, anyway on the bright side um, hmm, on the bright side well, I'll save that for my next video. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.